Hello, my name is Austin Leibel. Welcome to my new video series on how to write T-SQL like a pro. I work for a company called Pragmatic Works that does training on different Microsoft products like Power BI, Power Automate, as well as how to write SQL. Now today we are going to be focusing on Microsoft's dialect of SQL known as Transact SQL or T-SQL for short. We're going to be covering some best practices, introduction to SQL, and go through and as we expand upon each video in this series, hopefully give you some more insight. So whether you've been working with SQL for many years or you're just new to the product, there's going to be some great content available for you in this video series. Now let's start with covering some of the basics. What is SQL? Why is it useful? Is it hard to learn? Now, I think SQL is pretty easy to learn and I'll tell you why in just a few moments. Now, SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it is a way to go through and return information that exists within your organization's data about your organization. What is it doing? Is it performing well? What products do you sell? How much of the products do you sell? What employees are selling these products for you? You have different tables that exist in a SQL database that you can write SQL against and return results to do some business intelligence, do some analytics with that data. Now, SQL is useful for anyone who works with data, whether you are a data analyst, a business intelligence analyst, a database uh, owner or database uh, administrator, whatever you do to work with data, SQL is going to be useful for you. Now, how hard is it to learn? Again, I think it's pretty easy once you get past some of the different barriers to entry, just understanding how to write the basic SQL statement. SQL follows the basic English syntax. So if you speak English, you're going to find that this is very similar to constructing a sentence in English. And there's some differences, of course, but we're going to go through and break some of those down and talk about some ways to construct a SQL statement to make it easy and readable for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS and go through and write some basic SQL statements and see how we can construct that to make it readable throughout our organization. So let's head over to SSMS now. All right, so we are inside SQL Server Management Studio, or SSMS for short, and we're going to be working with a sample database that Microsoft provides. So AdventureWorks 2019, there's a way you could probably go through and gain access to that if you wish to follow along, but whatever data you're working with for this example is gonna be fine, because again, we're just going through and working with some basics on how to actually write a SQL statement. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about about how to go through and write SQL so it's readable for others within your organization that might need to read it in the future. And let's go through now and create our new SQL window and talk a little bit about that. So I'm inside of my SQL Server Management Studio. I'm pointing to my AdventureWorks 2019 database. So I'm gonna go over and select a new query window. Now for this video, I have zoomed in quite a lot to make this readable for everyone who's going to be watching along, but you can go through and increase or decrease the size of your SQL window by holding down the control button and using the scroll wheel on your mouse. So to start with, let's talk a little bit about why you would want to go through and write SQL that's readable. If you are going to share your SQL, you don't want to have others in your organization question how you're writing this, how you're returning this. They're not understanding exactly how you wrote this or what you're doing. So we want to make this readable so that when others go to it, they don't have to go through and ask you, hey, what are you doing here? What's this doing? Uh, I'm kind of a little confused because of how you wrote this. One of the best ways to start doing that is by using uppercase keywords. So a keyword is something that is a reserved word that is used to do some sort of action or have some sort of value applied to it in your SQL statement. So things Things like select to be able to go through and return different column names or from to decide which 
table in your database you want to return. We can make them uppercase or lowercase, either works, but as a best practice, I'm gonna recommend that you keep those in uppercase. Now you can do other things like join, you can do a group by, you can do where, you can do order by, different things like that to return those different values. But again, I'm gonna recommend you keep them in an uppercase syntax, just so it's easy to read for others within your organization. Now let's head over and create a new query window and talk about another key element of writing a SQL statement. And that's going to be not putting all of your code on one line. Let me show this a little bit clearer for you. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit for this example. Before we actually cover this, I actually have another tip I'm going to show you. So I'm going to expand my different tables inside of my database by clicking the plus icon next to my database. I'm going to expand my AdventureWorks 2019. I have my tables already expanded, but you might need to expand that for yourself there. And then I'm going to go down here and select my production.product table. So I'm going to increase this as well. And there I can see all of the different columns that exist on this table. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start out with my basic select statement to pull the different columns that I want to obtain from this table. And then I'm going to use an awesome feature of SQL Server Management Studio, which is that you can drag and drop your different column names into your SQL window. So I'm going to take my product ID, drag it after my select statement, and there I have my different columns. I'll put a comma after that as is necessary for when writing a SQL statement to return different columns. And I can pull over some different ones for myself. Let's say I want my product ID. I want my name. I want the color of the product and I want the size of the product. That'll be perfect. Now, what we're talking about is we don't want all of our SQL on one line. So what we can do and does work is I could put my from statement next and drag and drop also over the name of my table, production.product, throw in a where clause to look for a specific ID, say something like where product ID is equal to one. And I can run this and it works fine. But that's not going to be readable, especially as your SQL statements get longer and longer and you start joining other tables or doing other expressions inside of SQL. So we really want to make this readable for others in the organization. So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to put these different columns on their each individual line. I'm going to come over here and tab this over and it can kind of line this up, make it readable. So there we have our different columns. For our next statement from, I'm going to bring this back and have this on the same kind of organizational uh, structure as the select. So we're going to say select, select the different columns from say what table we're pulling that from, and then pull over our where statement as well to pull a filter in and only search for one individual record. Now this works as well. I'll go ahead and execute it. It works again. And you can execute by, of course, clicking the execute button or hitting the F5 key on your keyboard. Now we have this statement that works and this is much more readable. This is an easier to understand function here. So this is really the way that you would want to construct your basic SQL statement. Now I'm going to pull over another query window and explain the importance of using now I'm going to pull over another query window and explain the importance of when you want to write SQL out by hand, by keystroke if you will, to use the from statement first. Pull your table first. So let's head over and open up a new query window. So let's say we don't have access to SSMS or we, for whatever reason, are working in an environment that does not uh, have some sort of uh, functionality as SSMS does to drag and drop those different names over. And we want to write this out by hand. I can come through here and I could say select and then I can point to whatever column I want. Let's pick one out of our table here. Let's say weight unit measure code. This works, this returns this specific column here, but I have to type out that entire uh, syntax there. I have to type out that entire column name and then come through here and say from production.product. 
Now, what you just saw me do there at the end to get that production.product is the awesome capability of IntelliSense. IntelliSense allows us to go through and write SQL much easier by using this helpful code mechanism that reduces typing, provides quick access to syntax information, and makes it easier to view the different delimiters of complex expressions. So the way that you would really want to write a SQL statement if you were writing this specific one is actually write your from first. And I'll show you why in just a moment. So I'm going to come back to another line here and I'm going to say select and then I'm actually going to go right to my from now. I'm going to say from and I'm going to start just typing. I'm going to type just P and I can see I have different options here pointing to the different schema that exists in this database. The schema are almost like a container or a folder for the different tables that are like inside of each different organization. So I have my production schema here, production schema. I'm going to just double click that. And that automatically filled out that schema name without any typing. So I can go through now and say dot and I get a list of the different tables that exist with that schema. I can use my down arrow and go exactly to the table I want to return product hit my tab key and that is now spelled out so I'm pointing to production dot product but watch this this is where this becomes really awesome instead of going through and having to type out my entire weight unit measure code pretty lengthy column name there I can go through and just type a W and now I have a list of the different columns coming from that table again IntelliSense coming in very handy to go through easily point to a specific column hit the tab and now I have written this much easier once you get used to writing with IntelliSense this is a very helpful tool critical for how to go through and write especially long SQL statements for yourself so you're going to want to become very familiar with how to write IntelliSense and you'll be able to write SQL very fast once you do now, let's give another example of why we might want to not have columns all on the same line. I'm going to bring over another query window now and explain why you might want to have columns on their each individual line. All right, so let's go through here and open up a new query window. And I'm going to write my, again, basic select statement. Select from production dot product and you can see how fast once you start using IntelliSense you can write that uh, statement out and let's say we want to pull back some different column names I want to point to product ID I want to point to name now you'll notice name is in blue like some of these other keywords here so if you're pointing to a column that is called name you might want to put some open and close brackets around it just to specify that this is pointing to the column name and not some sort of database operation or anything like that so we were pointing to the name we want the color we want the size and we want the style so we have these different columns that we're returning. This again will work. This gives us a viable SQL result so we can return this with that. But instead of having this, let's say I want to remove a couple of these columns. I don't want all of them there. I want to remove the size column. I'm not interested in that anymore. Well, I can come through and use the double hyphen to comment out code inside of my SQL statement. So instead of now returning the size i i'm only going to return the product id name color and style well i want to return style but let's see what happens when i actually go through and execute this i am left without the size or the style because everything after that double hyphen is commented out and so i don't have the ability to just comment out one specific column i've commented out all of them so i have a solution for this when we come through and want to write a sql statement we're going to want to put the columns on their each individual line so i'm going to come through here and i'm going to put the name on its own line i'm going to put the color on its own line as well now why am i leading with the commas here 
If I don't lead with the commas and I come through and comment out these last two codes again, I am left with a comma at the end of my statement. And you can see my red uh, underscore here saying, hey, there's a problem with this. When I go through to actually execute that, it gives me an error because we're left with this comma. So you typically are going to want to go through and have the commas be your lead for this example right here. Comma there, comma there. This looks perfect. Now we can go through and maybe comment out the color. We can say, I don't want the color or the style, so we can point to individual columns that we don't want and just return the ID, the name, and the size because we have commented out each individual line of code on its own individual line. Now for the last example here, what I want to do is I uncomment this code here. I want to keep all the columns for myself, but I want to talk about aliasing. So when you want to go through and call a column something different than what it's actually called in the database, you can use an alias to do that. What I'm going to do with this is point to the list price column. So for list price, let's say I want to call this price. You can go through and say, I just want this to be called price. And you can say you know, space price. And this is using an alias. So when I actually go through and execute this now for myself, the column is referred to as price in my result. But if you're wanting to make this readable for users who may not be used to writing SQL, I would recommend going through and using an as keyword to say this column is list price, but it's going to be called price. That as is very important for people who, again, are new to SQL, don't understand why there's this list price followed by price. As explains a little bit better exactly where you're aliasing different things like. So I would recommend using that. Again, this works perfectly. Just another small helpful tip to make your SQL readable throughout your organization. All right, so this has just been an introduction to some best practices when constructing a SQL statement. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you want to know some more about SQL or have some specific questions about SQL, post some comments in the chat. Let me know what you're interested in hearing about in the future. We're gonna have lots of videos upcoming about how to do different things when writing SQL, and I wanna know what would be the best serve for you to go through and how to learn that. Now, I would also say, hey, if you wanna learn more about SQL, but don't want to wait for each individual video in this series, I would highly recommend going and maybe subscribing to Pragmatic Works on-demand learning platform where we have a couple of classes that are devoted to SQL, T-SQL specifically. We have an introduction to T-SQL and an advanced T-SQL class. So if you're interested in learning more about that, definitely subscribe to that and go at your own pace. Or potentially, if you want to scale up very quickly, join us in one of our public boot camps where we take a three-day intensive course in how to go from maybe having just very basic or little to no SQL knowledge to being a SQL expert in no time. So hopefully you have enjoyed this. I'm going to be putting these videos out each month uh, for the next several months on how to go through and write SQL like a pro. So I will see you in the next one.